Hello, COVID stoppers. We know you're out there alone, keeping the world safe from pandemic. Um, it's a little awkward being here with no one else here with us. It is. It's a little echoey. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> a lot more fun when everyone's here. But uh, but there, the Brotherhood is coming in to film the uh, Stations of the Cross, so we've yeah. got that. Yeah. We it's almost like having a live studio audience of three. Right. <laughs> yeah, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, the, um, you know, it, in uh, it, St. John, he says, um, he says, beloved, let us love one another. And today we're learning how to love one another by staying at home. So have fun with that. We hope you're enjoying it. Yes. We'd love to know online, because we're live streaming, mm -hmm. we have uh, campus pastors following along. Yep. We would love to know how you're using your time now that you've picked up all of this extra free time. So Justin's here. Courtney is somewhere else. They're both monitoring the live stream, and we're all, we're all here. We're all here, and it's all good. Well, our family made a catapult today out of popsicle sticks and shot marshmallows at each other. <laughs> oh. For science. That's for science. Simple That's right. Missions. It's all for science. You know, you seem like you're a long way away over there, Amanda. We are. The CDC requires it. That's that. I think that's only five feet ten inches. Well. Better back up, back <laughs> up, back <laughs> up. Well, welcome to our Lenten series this week. In our Lenten, as you as you may know, if you've been tuning in, mm -hmm. we are we are going along with the great Anglican prayer practices for Lent. Yes. And the the uh, we were interrupting that this week in order to do the Feast of the Annunciation, because the Feast of the Annunciation is today, and that is one of the feasts of our Lord. So um, now, unfortunately, we're in the middle of a Eucharistic fast. Our Lenten fast is extending farther than we anticipated. So a feastless feast. It's a feastish feast. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a spiritual communion and we have a form for this that we're hoping someone has uploaded so that you guys could take a look at. Um, you know what, let's figure out, hey, Carrie, could you grab my computer and open it to this, an act of spiritual communion? It's a page, it's a pages document that should be open on my laptop. And my laptop may be in my office still, but it may be out here one way or another. It's somewhere close. And, um, and where would we post this so that people could see it? You could potentially upload it as an image file on Facebook. Oh, okay. We could upload it as page one and page two. And by the time we get there, people could see it. Maybe. Could pray they along with us. You might have to click out of this stuff. Oh, oh. Ooh, mm. ooh, hmm. yeah. Didn't think of that. Well, we're figuring this out. Tell you what we'll do. We'll, we'll hold it up to the screen, <laughs> and they'll be able to look at it. We will walk toward the screen. We got you hooked up, Trinity. We'll figure it we out. We got you covered. <laughs> so, um, so when you hear the word, the Annunciation, what do you think of? Announce. What comes to mind? An announcement. announcement. An announcement. Very naming good. Naming things. Na uh, naming things. Um, I think of pronunciation. Pronunciation. That's right. And okay. enunciation, mm -hmm. using all my syllables and punctuation. Yes. Yep. <laughs> but it's not. It's annunciation. annunciation. It's an announcement. Mm -hmm. And um, the announcement, of course, is from the angel Gabriel to Mary that Jesus would be born, which would be really interesting if the Jehovah's Witnesses were right and that the archangel <laughs> Michael was actually Jesus. Then the angel would be talking about another angel and be kind of like, hey, have I talked to you about the guys in my posse? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. that would be interesting. And we know that um, angels are not humans, so a different category of being. So we just don't have to worry about that. All right. Okay. Um, there are some things that happen in the Annunciation. We're going we're gonna to read about them, learn about them, and then pray about them. Um, the, you know, the prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, comes from um, the uh, Annunciation from Gabriel to, uh, to Mary. Uh, Mary's response, be it done to me according to thy word. Um, that's that's uh, great. Did you find it by any chance? No, can't find it. Okay, I know I have a computer around here. We're going to just walk off screen and look for it. It's right here. It's going to leave me. Here we go. It's never good to leave me alone. There we go. Stream. Never, never leave. <laughs> Amanda says never leave her alone on live stream. It was only for a moment. 
Um, you should find it, and if you go to print and you print it as uh, page one and print it as page two and save it to an email, we can then send it to whom? To, can we send it to you, Rob? And you can get it up for us? Okay, he'll, he'll find a way. Rob will find a way. Rob always finds a way. Do we upload it in the comments? Yeah, there we go. We'll upload it as a comment. Can we can we put documents in the comments? If it if you take a picture of it. Okay. Upload, oh, it. we'll tell you what. I've got it right here, and Rob could just take a picture of it. No, just the just this right here. Here we go. <laughs> there. It's not pretty and in color, but but there we go. But it is present. Um, so so the feast of the Annunciation is actually a very very ancient feast. Yeah, we didn't just think of this yesterday. We don't typically think of things yesterday in the Episcopalian Church. No, no, Episcopalians don't tend to just invent new things wholesale. No. Although, although we're in the middle of writing a new prayer book, and it seems like lots of those liturgies are, are a little disconnected from the ancient traditions of the church. So maybe that's not our, our latest charism. Is that a watch what happens sort of moment? <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Amanda. <laughs> so um, in, in the first time, you know, uh, lots of early fathers have written about the Annunciation. I, I made a little list of them that I found uh, searching, my, um, searching my software. I found that I have documents from Athanasius, Gregory of Nyssa, and Augustine that all talk about the Annunciation and preach about the Annunciation. Um, and the entire time, it has been celebrated on March 25th. The entire time. The entire time. That almost never happened. Um, in fact, the first reference I found to it was, was by a guy talking about the, the computation of Passover and Easter. And, um, and in 240 AD, they were already doing the Annunciation on March 25th. That's a long time. It's a long time. Lo it's that's the a same date. <laughs> it's a grip a long time on the same day. Yeah. Now, now here's an interesting thing. Why March 25? Because it's nine months prior to December oh. 25th. Nine <laughs> months prior to December 25th. That's Someone has been pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Knows now, now math. <laughs> actually, so, so we hear a lot about the date of Christmas being picked because there happened to be a Roman holiday yeah. on that same day nine months later Trying on December 25th. hijack a secular holiday. Trying to hijack a secular holiday. But did you know that Christians were celebrating the, um, the Annunciation on March 25th at least 100 years before Christmas was decided to be on December 25th? Interesting. At least 100 years. So this predates the hijacking. Now, now here you might say, well, why March 25th? And there are a few things going on. First of all, it's the spring equinox. Okay. So it's where light wins out over darkness at the spring equinox. Secondly, it was also when the early church and, um, and ancient Judaism thought was the date of the creation of the world. Okay. So the thought was that, um, that creation occurred on March 25th that Jesus was conceived, that the incarnation happened on March 25th, mm -hmm. and that Jesus was crucified, wait for it, on? March 25th? She wins! <laughs> yes, that is true. So uh, the idea was that all of those days, that creation and recreation all happened on March 25th. It makes sense for the moment when God said, let there be light, would be the moment where light wins out over darkness. Ah, yes. So essentially, the ancient Christians viewed that the creation of Adam, the conception of Jesus, the second Adam, and the crucifixion of Jesus all happened on March 25th. And that's why it's a big day that has been celebrated forever and ever. Um, in the fourth century, Bishop Athanasius coined a hymn that goes like this. Today is the beginning of our salvation and the revelation of the eternal mystery. The Son of God becomes the Son of the Virgin. 
As Gabriel announces the coming of grace, together with him let us cry to the mother of God, Rejoice, O full of grace, the Lord is with you. It's a good song. Good. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's start our Eucharist. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do the service of the word. And then we're going to go to our order for spiritual communion that Rob has posted for you. It's on our Facebook page. So you can find the order for communion on Facebook. And if you're super slick, you could open that on another device, print it, and then you'd have to pray with us. If not, we'll just hold it up close to the camera when the time comes. For those of us who didn't pre-mark our prayer books, what page are we on? We would be on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer. I'm there. There we go. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. It would actually be his mercy endures forever. Where I should have teed you up. We're on the third oh, paragraph down we're the, in the Lenten. Part that says in Lent. In Lent. There I we go. I didn't read the preface. His, so mer- his mercy endures forever. Okay, let's start again. So now we just demonstrated how easy it is to, um, to get confused in the prayer book. So mm-hmm. once upon a time, Archbishop Cranmer's purpose was to have a super simple prayer book that everyone could follow along, that in medieval Europe you needed eight or nine different books to do church <laughs> and to do your spiritual life. And, and Thomas Cranmer said, let's put everything in one book that you would only need one book with no options. You'd just follow along. It would be paint by numbers. However, every prayer book since has become a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. And someone once told me that mathematically there were like 15,000 options by the time you get to Holy Eucharist. (laughs) So it it is easy to become confused. And should you become confused, worry not. The Lord is not confused and will (laughs) honor your worship anyway. So here we go again. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now on the top of page 356, we will say together, glory to God God in the highest and and peace peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord Lord God, God, heavenly King, King, Almighty God God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the collect of the day, the Lord be with you. And also with thee. Oh, have I handed you the readings? Oh, here they are. I have them. (laughs) No, actually, I do have them. Pour out your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Will you give us our Old Testament reading from Isaiah 7? Isaiah 7, 10 through 14, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol and high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, it is too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. And then we have a, a psalm, and the psalm tonight is um, Psalm 15, which is also the song of, well, Canticle 15, the song of Mary on page 91. Okay. So that way we'll just stay in the prayer book. So Psalm uh, uh, Canticle 91, which is the Magnificat of Mary from Luke chapter 1. It's on page 91 in your Book of Common Prayer. And we'll just pray this together. Okay. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My, my spirit, spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For, for he, he has, has looked, looked with favor on his, his lowly servant. servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has, he has sent, sent empty. empty. He, has he has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Okay, and then our Old Testament reading is from, I oh know, our New epistle Testament. reading is from Hebrews chapter 10. Chapter 10, also 4 through 10. Okay? For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do your will, O God. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. It is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, I really want to stand up to proclaim the gospel. Okay. It's hard to stay seated. Generally, you stay seated. You know, the problem is that if I did that, I can in the center. Okay. We have to back well, up. there we go. I have to back up. Yeah. Is that a back that thing up? <laughs> okay, there we go. Now I'm in? Okay. Good. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will, call, you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
You were perilously close to me for a moment. It was. You were within three feet. I think the Holy Spirit was between us. Okay. A barrier. That's good. That sounds like a camp joke. No. <laughs> no. That is actually a camp joke. Is it? It is, yeah, yeah. I never went to camps. I did go to middle school dances, and that was his room for the Holy Spirit. Also. Wow. You must have lived in the Bible Belt. Mm. Yes. Yes. I lived in a place called Niceville. Really? Literally. So you didn't live in Pleasantville. You lived in Niceville. Pleasantville came out while I was in high school. Really? And did you say, this is my hometown? I went to college in New York, and everyone who carted me asked me if Pleasantville was my hometown. Wow. Well, we happened to live on this block that was a lot like Pleasantville. There were 50 kids on the block that our kids grew up on, and, and it was just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so, the Annunciation. For maternity, God provided for communion with his creation that would remain forever. And in that communion, humanity would attain to eternal communion with God because that's what God made us for. That communion, of course, comes through Jesus Christ and through the incarnation of the second person of the Trinity through the Virgin. Now, the fathers say that, that um, nothing forced the uncreated one to join himself to human existence, that God did not become flesh because of the bad behavior of the devil or the bad behavior of humans made it necessary, but because it was simply God's plan before the ages. Now, now if you grow up in a, um, in a Reformed tradition church, you'll often hear that... that um, Jesus' death was God's plan B. That's a, uh, uh, I don't think God needs a plan B. And the <laughs> early church fathers didn't think God needed a plan B either. Yeah. That God's plan A always works. And that, um, that the eternal will of God is undeterred and always moves forward. Now, history and human behavior may be the occasion of the incarnation, but they're not the cause of the incarnation. The second person of the Trinity did not become flesh in order to be crucified. The crucifixion took place so that eternal communion between God and humanity could be fulfilled despite Satan, sin, and death. There was no necessity in God the Father that required the death of his son. Uh, St. Gregory the theologian said it like this, the father, quote, neither asked for him nor demanded him, but accepts his death on account of the plan of God, and because mankind must be sanctified by the humanity of God. So, so the, it's the, uh, the God becoming man so that we might become God. It's, it's uh, the Eastern concept of theosis, that God is the victor over death, kicking down the gates of hell, and winning us back into relationship. Mm -hmm. um, from before the ages, it's the will of God for humanity to be set apart and made immortal by communion with the humanity of the incarnate Jesus. So because we're in relationship with Jesus, who's incarnate and immortal, we become incarnate and immortal. Um, by his passion and resurrection, Jesus destroyed the obstacles and saved for us for incarnations, forever communion, which is why it's so tough for us not to have our physical, tangible communion right now during this COVID thing. Um, St. John of Damascus echoes this idea when he says that the Holy Virgin, quote, came to serve in the salvation of the world so that the ancient will of God for the incarnation of the word and our own theosis may be fulfilled through her. In other words, that we're getting because, because Mary acquiesced to, to possessing God within her, that we could possess God within us, and we'd be one back to God's self. Um, so we can uh, meditate on the fullness of our salvation, and, um, and we can think about the great saving acts of Jesus at the cross and the tomb, um, Everything always was and always is about that which the, um, the Orthodox call Pascha. You know, the, the, um, the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus 
the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I mean, think about that. It doesn't say in Revelation that he was the lamb that was slain in the fullness of time. It says he was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. It was always God's purpose to win us back. So although right now as you sit at home in your COVID-induced separation from one another, it may feel like the end of days, (laughs) but really the beginning of all things is at hand. You have questions. Okay. Ask away while I find the prayers that fell over the prayer bench. Do you bench. want me to get those for you? No, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I, can, I can appear silly on TV <laughs> for all the world to see. Uh, Hi, Courtney Wilson. Yes, it's a feast of the Lord. So we would have interrupted purple to go white. Good question. It's like he's done this before. Maybe. Is he a plant? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, he's a campus. He's an <laughs> he online is. pastor. He is. Yeah. Someone, someone asked about on Sunday why, why the purple Lenten shroud was not on the cross. That what was the liturgical purpose of that last Sunday? And the answer was it made Father Ken's head look like he had a purple mohawk, and it was super distracting. <laughs> so we made, we made a liturgical decision to not have Father Ken look like he had a purple mohawk. It was very rock and roll. It was, it was very rock and roll. <laughs> it was. And briefly, we were up to 11 and Our amps went to 11, (laughs) and then we blew the fuse. So all of you who are fans of Spinal Tap (laughs) got the reference. Everyone else said, what are they talking about? Is anyone still watching this, or have they tuned (laughs) out? (laughs) Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. (laughs) Little did they know. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) We apologize. (laughs) (laughs) Any other questions? Rob is checking. No, not right now. A one. Generally, generally in the Anglican Church, we have very few fast days. We only have two that are prescribed: Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Generally, my my. Um, my process is to fast until I break the fast with the Eucharist. So that's my general, that the, you know, the first time that I eat that day is, is the Holy Eucharist. That's a good question. I like that. Okay, with that, let's go to our, our spiritual communion. Okay. Okay. Now, you're going to have to tell me, Rob, when I'm, which camera to get close to and when I am close enough to said camera. Which one am I going for? Well, he has it in the comments, right? Oh, he has it in the comments. Yep. Oh, well, that case. Okay. Okay, in that case, let me share that and then go for another one. It's not in the comments. It's on the main Facebook page. Oh, the okay. main Facebook page. Yeah. Right. So if you go to the main Facebook page, you can find a page that says, an act of spiritual communion for those unable to attend Holy Communion. Mm-hmm. Now, interestingly enough, across our diocese and across America, there are a variety of practices occurring right now. Okay. Uh, some churches are doing what we're doing, which is largely going to morning prayer and fasting from communion under the idea that the Holy Eucharist is the family meal of the body of Christ, and if mm-hmm. the body can't gather, we shouldn't have the Eucharist. Um, it, the, it says in the, in the uh, rubrics for the Eucharist in the Book of Common Prayer and in the 39 Articles, that the clergy should not partake of communion without the people also being able to take of communion. Uh, Some people are doing a communion of adoration. They're elevating the host and letting people kind of look and participate um, prayerfully. Uh, That that has, of course, a couple of issues with the um, 39 articles (laughs) because it says not to elevate the host, but we do it every Sunday. Yeah. So... Um, so we're, we're apparently not that fastidious about those. <laughs> uh, some are doing a sort of uh, a 
have bread at home and do sort of a near Eucharistic experience. So we're doing the Eucharist at the altar, but you have a piece of bread at home. It's not really Eucharist, but it's sort of like the Eucharist. So have a kind of like Eucharist experience. Eucharist light. Eucharist light. Right, right. Um, and then, and then um, I actually heard of one place where they were holding out their hands and consecrating the Eucharist, so to speak, through the airwaves that, that Jesus could go anywhere he wanted to and there was no resisting the Holy Spirit. And, you know, now I suppose you'd have to have a, um, you know, because uh, the corporal, you know, it, it's the theory is that you consecrate whatever's on the corporal. So I guess you'd have to have a virtual corporal along with your uc virtual Eucharist. So there are a lot of things going on out there. We're doing an act of spiritual communion, right. which we have downloaded and, and uh, borrowed. I think originally it's from the prayer book of St. Augustine. And it says right here, the church has always taught that a person unable to attend communion is always able to make a spiritual communion. St. Thomas Aquinas described this as, quote, an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the holy sacraments and a loving embrace as though we had already received him, In quote. You know, a great place where this was evidenced. Um, years ago, I was a sixth grade teacher, and we had, uh, uh, we had a student and, um, whose dad had been a POW in Vietnam, and two students whose grandfathers had been POWs in Vietnam. And we had the three of them come in, and at the last moment, one of them, who was Senator McCain, had to scratch for national business. But the other two came in, and they it was too bad, because we were really excited about Senator yeah. McCain being there. But the other two came in, and they said that what got them through their eight years in Vietnam were the prayers they memorized, the hymns they memorized, and the scripture they memorized. And, and the prayers they memorized were from the Book of Common Prayer. Mm -hmm. And they, div they devised a tap code where they would tap messages back and forth between cells. And apparently within days, they got done asking themselves about how's the weather and how big are your rats. Mm -hmm. And they moved on to sharing uh, scripture passages, hymn verses, and prayers out of the Book of Common Prayer. And, and so they had what was called a spiritual communion. They, they took sort of this idea, and that was what got them through. And, um, and, and so, here we go. Um, together, pray with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to go down, because we've already had a collect, an epistle, and a gospel, we're going to go to the act of contrition. Together let us pray. O oh God, I am, I am very, very sorry, sorry that I have, have sinned, sinned against thee who art so, so good. good. Forgive, Forgive me for Jesus' sake, and I will try to, to sin no more. In you, together let us pray. In union, dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of thy church, where thy blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer thee praise and thanksgiving. I believe that thou art truly present in the holy sacrament. And since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, I beseech thee to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself unto thee and embrace thee with all the affections of my soul. Let me never be separated from thee. Let me live and die in thy love. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in thy servant in the fullness of thy strength, in the perfection of thy ways, and in the holiness of thy spirit, and rule over every hostile power in the might of thy spirit, and to the glory of thy Father. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. And now an act of praise and thanksgiving. 
Blessed, praised, and adored be Jesus Christ on his throne in glory of heaven and in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Amen. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesu, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee. Forever and ever. Amen. People of Trinity, I am honored to have shared this spiritual communion with you. Got anything to say, Amanda? Thank you for joining us. We're praying for you. If you need anything in, partic in particular, let us know. Uh, you can put things that aren't private in the comments. You can send direct messages and emails. If you have anything that you would like us to pray for that you're fine sharing publicly, you can add those to the comments as well. And we have connected you in realm groups. And they, the, those are home groups of between 10 and 40 people in your neighborhood mm -hmm. so that you could reach out and support one another. And if someone gets sick, make, make grocery runs or whatever mm -hmm. people need. So connect with one another via Realm. If you've gotten one of those invitations, use it. If you don't use it, it quickly, it expires. So it email Susan and she'll send you another one. Well, you can still go into the email, and you can still click the link, and you can hit Forgot My Password. Oh. And you can reestablish yourself there. Oh, way to go. It's expired. We always, always a font of helpful information. <laughs> and then on Sunday, you did an interesting thing with the kids. Tell us about that. We did a Zoom Sunday school class. So what Zoom is is a way that you can video conference with lots of people. So we had about... 10 to 12 families represented. Uh, so the picture that we uploaded about our staff meeting where it was the Brady Bunch screen of all of, all of your church staff, we had a similar thing on Sunday with the children. And, and so I led a Sunday school class through that. Uh, you might have seen if you have a child who is in that, you received a coloring sheet in your email. If you print that out and they color it, we can share that on Facebook and we can put up a bunch of coloring sheets for the children. Joanna did those with the youth and it seemed mm -hmm. like it was a big win. Yeah, she had a great Zoom meeting as a virtual youth group. So it's been a lot of fun uh, to get together virtually since we can't. So here we are. This is pretty new to most of us. So join us teching up. Yes. Tech up Trinity. That's our theme, Tech Up Trinity. Tech Up Trinity, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and, and you can find us this Sunday, not just on Facebook Live, but also on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And the website will have a page, Worship Today. And it will be in the Worship Today, there'll be the YouTube. So you don't have to have a Facebook uh, account this week to worship along with us. That so should make it easier. Let your friends know who are not advocates of Facebook and have avoided it like the plague. <laughs> that they can still join us on YouTube, and that doesn't require any sort of account or information sharing. Our YouTube page is Trinity Parish STA. So if you search that on YouTube, you will find us. Strangely enough, that's also our Facebook page, Trinity Parish STA. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, so our Facebook page is Trinity Parish STA. Our YouTube page is Trinity Parish STA. This stream on YouTube is copied in the comments. Copied in the comments. Yes. Great. So if you're watching us on Facebook, then our YouTube is linked in the comments, so look below. Great. And our Instagram page is Trinity Parish STA. As well. It, there's a theme. There's a theme. Mm -hmm. And you could find our website, not just on TrinityEpiscopalParish.org or TrinitySTA.org, but also on TrinityParishSTA.org. So pretty much wherever you type Trinity Parish STA, you should find us. Yes. <laughs> Good job on that. Thank you. <laughs> Between you and Acela and, and Susan and Susan and Jen Reed, a lot of people working very hard to get this going. Behind the scenes, making sure that we can do this, making sure that you get the information that you need. So just be in prayer for all the staff 
that we continue to move forward and we continue to learn and just give us the strength and the spirit to persevere through this. Thank you, Amanda. And with that, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. See you Sunday, Trinity. Bye. Done. Okay. Thanks for waiting, you guys. How long?